you doing today i am your host lacy g soldier turner and you know today i have a very special guest with me uh you know i always try to do a lot of things for the community whether i shed light on businesses or you know anything out here but today you know uh we're going to talk about um a subject that was very very that has been going on very for a very long time uh this woman right here she has to give it up the fight you know about her missing son, and we're going to get her on the platform today so we can shed light on this story that people that have tried to sweep under the rug, but we're going to keep it in the light. So today we have the wonderful, amazing, talented Marnie's Baker. Welcome to the platform. Hello. How everyone's doing? So you doing good. How are your day going today? It's going. Okay. <laughs> it is going. So I want to, you know, share some light on your son's story, you know, for the people who don't know uh, Jerome Baker. Um, so on May 15th, 2016 at 9 a.m., uh, I think he was planning to spend time with his family uh, at Six Flags, and he was with a female friend. But I'm going to let you shed light on that story. Could you tell the people about that day? Well, May 15th, 2016. It was a, a tradition in my side of the family where we go to Six Flags and we cook and we take all the kids and then we go back out and eat picnic. So my son was separated from his wife and he was dealing with um, somebody. I'm just going to say that. And uh, he tried to introduce her to that. Uh, he was with his son. That's the only family that was there. So that's the only family he had at the time with him. Okay. And they were getting ready to go to Six Flags. I got a call at 9 o'clock that morning, 8 30, 9 o'clock. He asked me for my car. Okay. And I told him no because he had a car. Okay. Where's your car at? And he like, we got all these kids. I'm like, no, you can't drive my car. You got a car. You got two cars. Okay. So um about nine, a little bit after nine, his best friend called me and was like, uh, I'm over here with Jerome's because he asked me to uh, use my car to go to Six Flags. I told him no, but I dropped him off and picked him up. So he said, okay, they have one car out there and then he can come back. But he said, when I get here, nobody's answering the door. So at this time, I was on the casino, so I'm sitting there, and I'm like, that's not my child. I don't know what made me just automatically think something was wrong. Because mm -hmm. I had talked to him that morning, and everybody, I'm like, nah, go back. And he like, what? I'm like, go back to the house and knock on the door again. So from the time he called me and told me that to the time, well, the time Jerome talked to him to the time he called me, it was 11 minutes. Mm. So my son went missing in 11 minutes. So, so your son called. So his best friend was Corey, right? Was, yes. So he called Corey and asked for the car, asked to borrow his car. And 11 minutes later, Corey showed up and he was nowhere in sight. Yes. 11 minutes from the last time he talked to him to the time he got to the house, it was 11 minutes. And Corey and Jerome have been best friends for years. They've been in the music industry for years. I don't know if you've seen none of their music, but Corey go by the name of C's. So C's been on the scene in St. Louis for, for years now. And Jerome has too. And his other best friend, they have a group, they had a company called High Life Group. So uh, his other friend is Jakaida. He's one of the better, uh, better rappers of St. Louis. You might know Jakaida. Yeah, I know her. So it was always Chris, Jerome, Corey, Manny. So I'm like, I'm not feeling this. Go back. And some in my spirit just tell me to go back. And it's like, what would make a mother tell their child, to, tell them to go back? And it's only been 11 minutes. And I just talked to him 30 minutes ago. But the time he got there and got back, it just went right. So then he uh, 
he called her. And uh, he told her to come open the door. So she came back to her house to open the door. But instead, she walked across the street. She walked across the street. Yes. Yeah, so naturally, if my man or your man, your wife, somebody, you you won't know what's going on. Exactly. She went across to the neighbor's house first for a few minutes, Corey said. Then she came back over there. Then she went, opened the door, went to the house, and my son coped his money, was on her couch. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the time, he had his own apartment. So he was over there visiting, and it was on her couch. She went to the uh, the couch. She went in his pocket, took his money out, and told Corey he might be, he probably gone with some girls or something. Still drop us off at Six Flags. Wow. So he still dropped them off at Six Flags, but it wasn't sitting right with him. And he oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. So and she knew he was supposed to be there at Six Flags with them. So she wasn't interested in like finding out what happened. Like, where is he at? Knowing that he's supposed to be coming with them to Six Flags. She just like drop off at Six Flags. Knowing she wasn't supposed to be with my grandson, she took my grandson too. She's not, that's not her child. He don't have no kids by you. Why would you take his son with you? And then my grandson was like, All the money she took out my daddy's pocket, she gave him $20 and spent the rest on the kids. But anybody that know my son, everybody know my son, he don't play about his money. So you was that comfortable to take his money out of his pocket, knowing what the consequences could be? No. I didn't feel that, but so that uh, we still hadn't heard nothing. So by this time, I'm I'm calling around. I'm uh, calling the police. She has six flags. I'm like, where my grandson? Bring my grandson. Um, I called his sisters because he's the oldest of twenty four. I called his sisters. Um. Then we all was like, okay, well, we're going to meet up at her house the next day. Because okay. we by this time, we're going crazy. Police ain't giving me no help. They just like, the police didn't gave me excuses from, he was with a white girl on the east side. We got to tip this. Everything but looking for him. That's crazy. So at that point, we did the, we went over to her house. We was uh, talking to people. We was kicking down doors, looking at for stuff. We trying to get police. And I did have a couple of friends that were police officer friends that came that were off duty. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the ones that was on duty because I ain't getting no help. Mm -hmm. But a couple of my friends that were our police officers that was off duty came out, try to help look. Mm -hmm. So the next day we passing out flyers, trying to find them. She pulls up in his car. And she sits in the car while we're passing out flyers. So she ain't helping or nothing? No, she said, I'm going to go get some more flyers. She never came back. So at that point, the kids is getting upset. But in my mind, I'm like, I'm not worried about her. I'm just worried about my son. Let me find my son. So when we were over there, when we went back to her house, I'm like, okay, well, whatever my son got here, let me just get his stuff. Take it with me. I take it back to the thing. And some things she didn't give me. Um, my granddaughter diamond ring, she didn't give it to me. She said he gave it to her, but I got the video where he <coughs> was giving it to his daughter. So uh my ex-husband, my husband was there, my ex-husband was there, which is my son's daddy. He came from Columbia. He like just get his stuff, whatever she don't give us, let her have it, whatever. He wasn't feeling it. So I'm going back and forth with the police every day. And they like, what you want me to do? And I'm like, what do you mean what I want to do? And what kind of like, I don't want to say pisses me off, but it does. We don't have a missing person unit in the city of St. Louis. Right. So if your per- if somebody you know go missing on the weekend, you out of luck. Yeah. You got to wait till Monday. And then after two o'clock, they off the clock. That is crazy. 
So while we out here finna give people five hundred dollars to subsidize their income, you need to be putting a missing person unit together, right. knowing we got all these people in St. Louis that's missing. Because at the same time, my son was missing. Brandon Bankhead went missing like a week after him, and then Marquan Lee went missing a week after him. Still, they're still looking. I got a little bit of closure, but they're still searching and looking. Yeah, and it's just crazy. Like when you even watch the first 48, how they tell you as each hour and minute passes, the case is getting colder, you know, where they can just jump in and start trying to find out what happened. So the longer they take in this, like the case is getting colder and colder. So that's crazy. So, but um, let me talk about the next thing. So on October 27, 2016, an unknown skull was found um, by the utility workers behind a vacant building in a wooded area. So can you tell people about that day when you found out? Well, that's not the day I found out it was here. Oh. When they found the school, by dinner records, they told me it wasn't him. Oh. So I was relieved. Okay. The, the vacant area is right next to first students on the side. They said is Riverview, but actually it's not Riverview. Oh. Actually, it's... Um, it's on the side of the highway. So when you ride down the side of the highway, you will see the buses there. And when the buses are there, he was right next to uh he was right next to the buses. Mm. So I was kind of like, y'all didn't smell anything. I mean, my baby was there a year. That's crazy. Almost almost a year. And I'm like, and they was like, Oh, we we used to that. Used to it. And so this area, he if it wasn't a gas leak, they wouldn't have never found him. Mm. If it wasn't a gas leak, they wouldn't have never found him. And I think it's like I begged the police officers to pink his phone. To pink his phone. And she kept giving me the run around. Why should I ping his phone? And what really got me upset is that they pinged. I don't know if you remember. It was a little girl. I think she was a dancer. A little white girl mm. was a dancer. She went missing. They pinged her phone and they found her like couple of hours later mm -hmm. and i'm like ping my baby phone why y'all ping my baby phone i'm like y'all need to ping my baby phone and they never did ping his phone so i'm going down there every day and i'm, and I'm being professional and i'm going down there and i'm suited and i'm booted and i'm talking to her and she's just giving me the run around every day she like uh, what you want me to do? Oh, we think he with a white girl. I'm getting a tip over here. She's not following any of the tips that I'm giving her. I told her I found my son's shoe out in the uh, alley. I found drag marks out in the alley. She didn't follow none of that. It rained the next day. I mean, it was so much evidence that just went away. Right. So I was upset because they were not paying my son's phone. To, I think it was like five months later, I just got I just was like, okay, I'm finna throw some, some chucks on, t-shirt, tennis shoes. I'm finna act like who they want me to act like. <laughs> oh yeah, I think yeah, I think I did say you found out five months later, and then you say they tried to um, hide it from you. You got a tip uh, that somebody said check the nine one walk nine one one call. I got a tip. They said call them about a nine one one call. And it's after they finally pinged my... First of all, she was told to ping my phone like two months before that, and she didn't. She still didn't. So when I went down there and act the way I did, and then her boss came, and she's like, what you expect me to pick? If I ping it, then what? I said ping his phone. So the boss was like, well, just ping her phone. Just ping the phone to appease me. That's basically what they say. Just ping the phone That's to appease crazy. her. <laughs> all along, when they pinged the phone, they found out he made a 911 call. If they would have pinged the phone today, they would have seen that he made a 911 call today, and they would have seen that it was foul play. Mm -hmm. But because they chose not to, I got a call. It's like, you need to call them. You need to find out about this 911 call. I'm like, 911 call? I'm like, okay. So I called him. I'm like, there's a 911 call with my son. And when I tell you that I had like maybe 15 police officers, I had um the lieutenant 
everybody was in the room and I'm sitting around the room like I ain't had this much attention since the whole thing happened. Now everybody here because we're saying that it's a 911 call. That's crazy. Photo ops. <laughs> and his best friend, well, my best friend is his godmother. So she was there and they thought she was my attorney. But she wasn't. That's his godmother. But she's sitting there and she's taking notes and they sitting there and I'm like, you know, if y'all would have pinged this phone five months ago, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be where we at now. My son case is still a cold case. Do they have suspects? Yes. Have they brought the girl in for questioning? She still has a warning. It's seven years. Mm -hmm. You telling me you ain't you couldn't have got her by now in the last seven years and brought her in for questioning? There is no way you could tell me that. So, Marnice, let me ask you: uh, Did you listen to the nine one one call, or do you know what was on the nine one one? I can't listen to the nine one one call, and the reason why I can't listen to the nine one one call, eventually I will. But the reason why I can't is because he's on the nine one one call fighting for his life, mm. more than one person. So we do know that. And they don't want me to know too much because it is an op open, active investigation. But it makes me look at people upside their head when I'm walking by because I don't know if you did something or y'all did something or who did something. And then it's like, it's all in a circle because I know so many people in St. Louis and other people and it's like, it's coming in a circle. Like, he was arguing with the landlords. We know everybody know about that. The landlords are well-known people from the projects. We know that. They don't know, but they sister and my mother were real close friends. So it's like a circle. So it just makes me keep my guards down for everybody. I can understand that. And uh, I think uh, you just said too. You say you found the shoes, and I ain't want to take the shoes in for evidence. The Remy bottle, the shoes, the uh, <laughs> the drag marks was the next day had rain, so they didn't they didn't do no evidence. That's crazy. Mm. And I know you were saying they were saying he was probably with some uh, white girl. You said he was probably into drugs and all this. Uh, what can you tell the people about Jerome? Well, this is the key thing. They wanted to find some bad evidence on him. And I'm not going to sit here and say Jerome was an angel because Jerome was the typical young black man. I'm I'm not going to say that. But at the time, they couldn't dig up no dirt on him. They couldn't dig no dirt up. You know, the world would have put it out there if they could have put it, digged it up. Um, His videos, they played one of his videos and he had a little gun in the videos, but they neither here nor there. But Jerome was a father. He was a brother. If anybody know him, when I say he was family oriented, that's what he was. He had mama's boy tattooed on his neck. You know, me and Jerome grew up together. And the reason why I say that, because I was a teen mom. So we only 15 years apart. I turned 50. He turned 35 on Thanksgiving this year. And, um, When I, it's like, when people found out that was my son, people that I like knew, like bus drivers, where I, I teach for a living. So bus drivers would come up to me and be like, oh, your son, I loved your son. Your son used to uh, pass out fireworks to the kids in the neighborhood who parents couldn't buy fireworks because he had fireworks. He'd get the kids fireworks and he helped everybody. And it wasn't a neighborhood that he couldn't go in. You know, it wasn't like I could go here. He could go everywhere and he was accepted everywhere. So it's like the police could not find no reason for this is what they told me out there on my mouth. No reason for nobody to do nothing to him unless it was envy or jealousy. So let me ask you this. Uh, I saw you say this somewhere. You was like uh, everything that started rolling into Keisha Boy stepped up. So can you tell us about that? Keisha came in, she kicked the door down. You know, she she came in, she was like, look, let me get your DNA. She came <laughs> to my job, she got my DNA, she sent my DNA in. She just was my, uh, 
<laughs> my guardian angel because if she didn't step up and step in it was like wasn't nothing gonna get done mm. McKern, i don't know why they took out the office for a minute because i was but she back again i don't understand why but she might be a little overworked but they need to put her in a different position because this ain't for her mm. every time i meet now that i go out help other people that have missing kids and, and every time i come across a family member they say the same thing mm. so she's doing the same thing mm. all the mothers that met with the young men that <laughs> would miss it around my time she was telling us the same story mm. and it was like i don't know if you burnt out you need a break but this ain't for you and it's like they don't look for our black men and and i tell people this and i'm an advocate for it i'm an advocate for my african-american men and the reason why is because the way it goes on the tadpole if a white kid come up missing they going forward then a white woman they looking for <laughs> then a white man they looking for mm -hmm. then a black kid mm -hmm. then a black woman and then a the black man they gonna say oh black man oh he can leave we really can't look for him because they they able to leave on their own and look we need help too up here it's like it it's a lot and like i say i just told my husband today my son has so much life in him if you watch his videos and so much and it's like it's just been robbed he's been robbed his kids are struggling his son is struggling his son is 18 his son has been struggling since because he was with him and he blames himself that if i was if i was still with him maybe he wouldn't uh maybe nothing happened i have to tell him now you might not be with us mm -hmm. you know um i get in my feelings and i go talk to the police and they'll be like we still working but it's like no y'all not and i understand because y'all it's case after case after case right. after case after case mm -hmm. and it's getting sad that we as a people are the ones hurting each other and i'm an advocate i go out here i march i do everything but one thing that i am a firm believer of and people say you shouldn't say this but we always blame the white man did this white man did that half of us killing each other right Real that. the white man that came in your neighborhood and did no drive-by and shoot and shot y'all up the white man that came and took my son and put him back there in that ditch mm -hmm. you know it's it's like how can we expect them to show us any respect or anything when we can't even show ourselves no respect we can be a powerful people if we just had a little bit of unity right they don't understand how strong we could be if we just unite because one thing about and like i say my mom's biracial so i don't i don't get into the white black all this because i got all type of people in my family but the one thing i say is that they have unity mm -hmm. they may not like each other Facts. but they will stick with each other Facts. we will play like we like each other and be digging a hole for the our brother and our sister instead of helping them get up mm -hmm. and my son had a son called crab in the buckets and it just reminded me it's like when are we how far more how much more we got to take before we all realize what's going on these laws are not put into place for us to secede these gun laws are put out here not for us they think oh we could carry we could do this no that's so y'all could do what y'all want to do and, and take some more people up off of her exactly yeah. because when growing up we were able to get into it with each other we fight then we All can right. look down 10 yeah. years later and be like man what was we fighting yeah. for remember that yeah <laughs> you know i don't even know what we's fighting for <laughs> that's just killing like now you kill somebody you can't dig him up i'm sorry man i ain't mean it you know it's like yeah you see just, you see just recently somebody killed somebody yesterday at the barbershop they said over ten dollars uh 
It was arguing over ten dollars. And have two families got to suffer. That's crazy. And then it's sad because we'll be in these groups. Because I'm in a grief, uh, TLG grief group. I've been in there since the day they found the school. That was my first day. And um, one of my friends from the group named Rhonda, we worked together. Her son was uh, T.Y. He was the basketball star. So he was getting ready to uh, take off, you know. And here you is, and somebody then just took your life. And as we sitting in these groups, all us mothers, we all looking at each other because we don't know if your son got something to do with my son or my son got to do something with yours or if this is revenge for you doing something to that. And that's just me. I'm looking at everybody yeah, like. You, yeah, because you don't know. You don't know. Yeah, so. So let me ask you this, Marnese. What is your response to the person or people who killed your son and took his life? That's one I struggle with. I struggle with, and I, I, I'm honest, and I'm honest in group, because if I could just sit up here and say, oh, I forgive you, and I, I'm not going to say I'm there yet. I'm not. Some days, you know, I don't want no other mother to feel the way I do, and then some days I want the person that did, I want his mama to hurt like I hurt. So I can't say that I'm truly at that point where I'm just 100% forgave that person i used to want to know why but it ain't no reason you could tell it ain't nothing you could tell me why you can't make me understand why you did something to my child um it takes you to dark places you know and i'm a person with a lot of light in me so for you to sit there and it makes me go to dark places that i don't like to be I tend not to think about it, you know, and I have to pray and let go and let God cause some days I'll be wanting a head on a platter. It's just realistic. Then some things I'm like, I don't want his mama to feel what I went through just cause of they, they sons. And then, and then I say they, because I know it's more than one person. Mm-hmm. And my thing is you, I know my son, my son was not no pistol playing little boy. He, but he'll fight. And that's where I, I get down on myself about because maybe I should have let him, maybe he could have protected himself instead of just saying, no, get out there and fight. You can fight. And don't nobody fight no more. So. But look, it's just like, like you told his son, you know, you can't blame yourself for that either. You know. Yeah. But as a, as a mother, you're going to blame you. You're going to go through that. It's all different emotions. Mm-hmm. You know, it's different emotion. It's days that I wish I could turn back. The hands of times these days i wish i could do a lot of things it's just i don't know it's 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 hard to deal with and if anybody sit up there and tell you like i like i say i can't never tell nobody i understand what they're going through because they can't understand what i'm going through because the relationship you have with your child the relationship i have with my child it's all different right it's all different so i can know some of your pain Cause it's like a hole in your heart it doesn't get healed you know i birthed four kids so it's like i divide my heart in four ways and then on the outskirts is my my step kids on the outskirts and it's like a piece of my my heart is gone mm-hmm. my baby uh he ain't deserted yeah. he was too good of a person he helped everybody and he just didn't deserve that Oh, look, let me ask you this. Where can people still listen to his music today and check him out? He's on YouTube, High Life Crew, Lou Baby. Um, and then his best friend, C. C does a lot of, uh, still does a lot of work. And his godson is rapping now. His C's little baby, he was seven. So on YouTube. And then, um, uh, like right now, I have a foundation in Jerome's eyes. So I work with the kids, other missing. So I give back to the kids who are missing, uh, parents are missing. But now I've expanded to people, not just missing, but the ones that they lost. 
the, uh, one of their parents. And like I say, by me being a teacher and then knowing the trauma that my grandkids went through, it made me sit back and reflect. Sometimes we might think a student is bad or we something wrong, but we never know what traumas these kids are going through on a daily basis before they step up into school. So the school needs to be a sanctuary for them. It needs to be a place, a safe haven for them. And uh, that's what in Jerome's eyes, it's going to be a safe haven for kids. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't hear the kids, we're going to have another generation of hurt people hurting people. That's real tough. So do you have anything else coming up? Uh, anything coming up that you want to promote or anything? Well, what I do right now is I usually pick three kids, three to four kids Christmas. And I usually do it out of my pocket. I had a couple of people donate a couple of times like gifts. But I pick uh, four kids and I give back to them for Christmas. And right now I'm making a decision on which kids I'm uh choosing and i don't know if you're aware of uh Demikia. i keep not pronouncing her wrong word, but um her and her guy was driving down lucas and hunt and they execute her and her guy yeah so that's a story later a few weeks and ago. that was my kid's friend so her baby's then been around me her son's then been around me so I'm leaning towards trying to do something for them for Christmas. And right now I'm just starting off. I do four kids at a time and any donations for them, anything will help them. Hopefully I'll be able to do something for more kids. Hopefully it won't be, it won't be having to be somebody that lost their they parents to gun violence. Uh -huh. Hopefully I could change it. But right now it seems like this. It's a lot of kids without parents. Right. And the sad part is a lot of them are losing their mothers too. Mm -hmm. So how can people donate to you? Well, my, um, I'm sorry, my, uh, I have a website in Jerome's eyes dot com. Mm -hmm. They can go on there. And I'm then also, there. then also I, um, I have cash at Mornice Baker. And then also I have my um Kuntzvaker at gmail.com, my email address. Okay. And I'll make sure to put that, I'll make sure to put that in the article also. Well, uh, Miss Mornice, I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, like I said, you know, you've been an advocate for all the missing people, period. But the longest since I met you, you know, we still got to get this documentary and all that. Um, I know you, 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 you know, we grew up on uh, Waterman and Kings Highway in this this great big house, and um, that's where I want to start at, where he grew up at. I don't, I'm not going. I'm just going <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna make it. Hey, look, we're gonna make it happen up in this piece, but. I'm definitely going to, um, you know, like I said, I'm going to write an article, put this out in the St. Louis Argus, because people need to, you know, hear these stories for real. Like you said, uh, it's great that you're doing these things. Like you said, we we need a missing persons unit. So, um, And we need to know that it's a lot of men missing from St. Louis, and they think yeah, men right. could just go. We They don't just walk away. Right. They're just not walking away. Mm-hmm. And like you said, they just dismiss it because they are oh, they men, you know what I'm saying? They just going to do something. Hopefully in, in, in May, his upcoming thing, that's what I plan on having to march for the men, for the men that are missing. And I, I'm not excluding women or children, but I need to put an emphasis and focus on the men that are missing because they are the last ones to be looked for. Right. Well, you know, I'm here for you. Whatever you need, I got you. So I thank you. No problem. So I appreciate you. I'm going to let you get back to your night, your evening. Thank you once again. And I will let you know as soon as I drop this. Okay. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye.